any interesting stories or memories with other notable artists or producers you want to share with us today? Over um, your years in the music industry. I mean, I'm notorious for not getting along with engineers. Because I just, I, I engineer myself. All my music, any song you ever heard me record on, nine times out of ten, I recorded myself. I engineer myself. I do, I'm sitting at in front of the computer. One time, when Thug invited me to the studio to do special, I actually had written Thug, uh, I wrote Thug a couple songs, and I was trying to get him to do the songs I wrote for him. And when he heard him, he was like, that shit hard, twin. Keep that shit for yourself. I'll just get on it. And I respected that because a lot of artists wouldn't do that. But before he got there, he told me, go through there and just tell the engineer to play something. If you like it, get on it. And he was playing a song. He was playing special already. And he only had the hook on there. And it was, I just heard Mike Will made it. I was like, I want to get on that. Because Mike Will made it. I was like, bitch, I want to get on the Mike Will beat. It's Thug anyway. Thug going to go hard. So the engineer was like, nah, you can't record to Thug here. I like, bitch ass nigga, I told you to put the song on. Nigga, Thug already told me I'm good. I can record whatever. And he was like, nah, I ain't record. Ah, right, boy, you really a bitch ass nigga. And then I'm thinking, Lucci, this might be his people. Like, chill out. I don't want to fuck up nothing. But I know what Thug told me. And I can tell by our relationship in the past, he kind of straightforward. He going to let you know what it is. So, shit, when he got there, I put him to the side. I said, hey, bro, I don't really like this bitch ass engineer, bro. I was like, I like this song. No matter of fact, I said, I like this song. I want to get on this. He said, why you ain't already got on it? And I looked at the engineer like, oh, and I told I could have been done. We could have been working on something else. And I was like, man, this nigga said, I couldn't record nothing. He said, what? I said, really, man, that nigga, oh, I really kind of want my one. I want to get out there and get my one-on-one -on -one with the nigga. And Thug was like, shit, you want to whoop him? You want to whoop him? What's up? We can whoop him. And he started like trying to press the end of it. I was like, nah, I'll let him make it. It's all right. It's all right. But just even that moment, I was like, I fuck with this dude. Like, he was just a real nigga. And he respected me being a real nigga. He didn't treat me no, you know, differently. So that was a note. That was very. Also, one time I was in the studio with El DeBarge. And we, I got a song with El DeBarge. And I was just kind of coaching him through the song. And that shit was just kind of like. It was a dope moment. I've been in the studio with R. Kelly. One time, Thug came me in that motherfucker with me, Offset, Tiger, Kylie Jenner, Young Thug, French Montana, Ben Diesel. It was just so many motherfuckers. We just had vibes, experience. I got a song with Ben Diesel, bro. I got a song with Ben Diesel, no bullshit. No bullshit. No, you ain't never heard nobody with a song with Ben Diesel. I got a song with Ben Diesel. And French Montana never came out. I got a song with Nas and Chris Brown never came out. Yet. Yeah, I'm going to say yet, yeah, because we're going to speak that shit to existence. So them was all like magical moments. Being in the studio Buster Rhymes, I rapped for Buster Rhymes before, and he was just like, what the fuck? Like, he was just, moments like that. I did a, I worked on the I Can't Feel My Face Volume 2 with Jewel Santana and Lil Wayne. I, I actually worked on that at Joel's house in the basement. I stayed with him at his house for a couple of days. That was dope. You know what I'm saying? That's just a lot of my, me and Nip, man, just being around Nip and being actually really know Nip and be around Nip personally. I was one of the few people he ever posted on his Instagram page. Like, he had posted me on the page. I remember it was a big deal back in the day. So it was like, you know, those were all iconic moments. Anything that happened with T.I. and Jeezy, through my boy Neil and Jock. It was so many moments, man. It's hard to recall all of them. Uh, why, some of these songs that you mentioned with Vin Diesel, the nah, I mean, why haven't some of these songs seen the light of day? They're not my songs. I got a song, Me, Young Thug, and Ray Shrimmer. Oh my God. That shit's so hard. It never came out. Me, Quavo, Ray Shrimmer, Young Thug, we recorded that shit. Our, my boy BLB, shout out BLB, be shooting my videos. Well, he, he and Thug videos. He shot the uh, Lifestyle video for Thug, a lot of shit. He shot my video with Lil Boosie, Rap Life. But he always reminded me, he was like, man, you remember that one song? You got with Ray Shermer and Quavo them. And I, I just be thinking back, like, fuck, I need that song with Quavo them right now. <laughs> like, man, I've done a lot of shit. 
But we and for a lot of artists, man. So none of those songs came out because they're not your songs. You're just featured on them. Exactly. I mean, it's up to them what they're gonna put out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, shit, I'm I'm sure if I'm I mean, I'm a definitely when I am gonna revisit the situation when I get a little leverage under my belt, you know what I'm saying? The Nipsey Hustle post, what what was the uh, reason for his post of you? Well, actually, he came out here for six all day because, you know, that neighborhood rolling 60 Crips. And my brother, True, you know, like I said, when I say my brother, man, you got to know this somebody I love. I know their mother. I know their kids. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's a it's a real, other than God, God is my real blood brother. That's my brother I moved out here with. But if I call somebody my brother, somebody I'm very in tune with. But uh, yeah, I met him. He came out here for six all day, and I just when I came out here, really wasn't no four, four tray crips. I'm four tray. Wasn't no four tray crips in Atlanta like that at the time. It's some now a couple, but like I was just cripping, so I went with around the crips, and they just so happened to be neighborhood. And I had just got shot, so I was kind of on some renegade shit. Like I'm not gonna die, bitch. You gonna die before I die. I was kind of on my last straw. So I was stepping on shit like Craig Daddy. Ain't that what old boy said? Stepping on shit like Craig Daddy. Yeah. I was stepping on shit and they fucked with me. And we became a family. What was Nipsey Hustle really like? Same way you same way he's perceived. He was inspirational, bro. He was one of them niggas that was always talking about something bigger than you thought he was talking about. Like Waka Flocka. Like people got him fucked up. Walker, one of the most intellectual people I ever met in my life. Like, he would surprise you. He's the polar opposite of everything that you think by hearing his music. You know what I'm saying? And I think a lot of great ones are. You know what I'm saying? But Nipsey, Nipsey was one of the few who could embody both. And I just, I feel like every time I was random, I was trying to learn some shit. You know what I'm saying? I was trying to, normally when I'm around my people, I'm teaching some shit. I'm always teaching and preaching, teaching and preaching. When I was around him, it was like I could, even if it wasn't a lesson in the word, even in his body language and his motion and how he carried himself and how he treated people, you know what I'm saying? It was something I could learn from. So that was dope as fuck. Why do you think there's a disconnect there with some people, with their music and maybe their intelligence what? or that sort of thing? I mean, it's the flesh and the spirit, bro. It's a human. You know what I'm saying? We got flesh and we got spirit. We got the outside and we got the exterior and the interior. You know what I'm saying? The exterior, I like to fuck bitches. I like to sip lean. I like to smoke weed. I like, you know, do some other toys, drugs, whatever the fuck I want to do. And then in my spirit, I'm like, I know I'm supposed to be teaching these people about God, but maybe telling them about God and how you teach them, maybe showing them God-like ways within myself by being nice and polite to people, by being a, a teacher to my people around me, by being a nurturer to my kids, by being a leader for my woman or women or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's being like God. So it's just, I, you know, it's a balance. It's a balance, bro. And like, I got a lot of spiritual music and a lot of other type of music, but I, a lot of times in this culture, you gotta know your market. You know what I'm saying? So me, I'm more strategical. I know my market. So I would much rather, I'm gonna get them what they want, but then in exchange, I'm gonna give them some of what I want. You know? So that's how I try to look at it. And what culture are you referencing here? The hip hop culture, the music culture, the urban culture, and I believe urban, I hate that shit. Cause it was really a word I feel like was was not created, but it started being utilized in it started being it started being utilized in urban I mean in our culture to kind of disrespect black people. It was like urban instead of like like late it used to be a mute okay, you had pop, urban, R and B, Wutu, but in black culture specifically, as of late, the last couple of years they Urban, you know, it's a culture thing. It's an urban in culture. They're using this word to kind of, it's, it's almost disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? But as black people, like we did with the word nigga and a lot of other shit, we owned it. You know what I'm saying? We're like, okay, we took it, but we shaped it to what we wanted to. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I try to do with a lot of stuff. I try to shape it, man. I don't want people to see just the flat surface. You got to make it yours, man. There are some in the music industry who, who aren't using the phrase urban uh, for the genre urban music anymore. They're using the word black, calling it black music exactly. instead of urban music. 
Some, yeah. not everybody, but some are Which starting. Which really in essence is what, what the fuck it is. You know what I'm saying? But that's like, um, that's just an, a polite way, a polite way for white motherfuckers to say what they want to say. <laughs> Period. You like that though? You like it being called black music instead of urban music? I don't give a fuck what you call it because I'm not offended easily. You know what I'm saying? I'm just not a person you can overthink or over talk or out. You know what I'm saying? I just hate, um, I hate the 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 the, the derivative where it comes from, where it's derived from. You know what I'm saying? But I love what we change it into. When it comes to some of these drugs you mentioned, lean, marijuana, things of that nature, are you addicted to any of this stuff? Hell no. I'm a very cold turkey ass person. Like I'm very cold turkey. Like I'm the type like I smoke cigarettes my whole life down there. But when I got shot, the doctor said, Hey man, look, if you keep smoking these cigarettes, your ass gonna die. I ain't never touched a cigarette a day again in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can, you know, if anything I say, I can, like, I'm a mind over matter person. You know what I'm saying? I think it all start right here. If I can say, I'm not the type of person that's like, okay, I'm finna stop eating meat. I'm finna wing off. If I'm gonna stop, I'm just gonna stop. I ain't winging off. It ain't no, I'm gonna only eat it one time a week this week. I'm just gonna, if I ain't gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it. And for time reference, it's November 2021 now. 